up? Trisha Hershberger from SourceFed Nerd here, and I am joined by Mike Roadman, Senior Director, Tech and Standards, from CEA. How are you doing today, Mike? I'm doing great. Awesome. We've got a great show going on here at International CES 2014. Woohoo! So Mike's here because he's going to tell us a little bit about what's going on with UHD. Last year we saw a lot of UHD displays. The new tech is awesome, but there wasn't a lot of content to play on them. Isn't that right? Last year, that's true. Last year the story was really about upscaling your full HD content from your Blu-ray player or your gaming console or from some other device, DVD player, because all of the sets last year could upscale content. This year the big uh, story is more about content coming over the top. The film industry has been capturing in 4K for years mm -hmm. because it, it was to their advantage. Mm -hmm. And you also have uh, new production. Amazon and Netflix have both announced. And YouTube. New, and YouTube. <laughs> new production coming through uh, in uh, 4K. So House mm -hmm. of Cards. Exactly. Right? All of the Netflix stuff. original content, yes? That's right. And That's a lot right. of downloadable content from Sony's marketplace um, and things like that are just becoming more available. So it's really here, it's really now, and it's really coming to your living room. So Mike and I are going to run around CES and show you some of the coolest stuff in UHD for CES. 2014. So Mike and I are standing here in front of the Samsung bendable UHD OLED TV. Now what's exciting about these is you'll hear a lot of critics say that curved UHD displays are maybe just a gimmick. It's cool tech but who's actually going to use it and how does it benefit you? The nice thing about this is you have the option. If you're watching something that might be viewed better curved, you can hit a button and it moves to become a curved UHD. How do you see this benefiting the consumer at home? Really, when you're talking about the benefits of, of a really, really good picture, the mm -hmm. devil is in the details. You want to get the details right and making sure that the screen is is all parts of the screen are at the same distance from the viewer, okay. making sure that you've got a really, really excellent viewing angle for all parts of the screen. That's part of the whole picture. So the bendable part of it is making sure that some of the additional details are really, really cleaned up nicely. So it's, it's great technology. It's very exciting to see. And as the consumer, if you're, if you're about three to four meters away from the display itself, is the curved display giving you better depth of field? I mean, what what is that benefit well, that's not, really? That's not really the, okay. the main the main play here. What's really going on is that, uh, particularly with the larger screens, mm -hmm. the far side of the the edges of the screen, the extents of the screen, are actually farther from you than the center of the screen. Okay. If you really want that immersive experience, that that sort of sense of realness, that mm -hmm. that I'm really inside this picture. You want to get a little closer and you want to have all parts of the screen at about the same distance from you. And I've heard people say that when they're looking at a curved UHD OLED from the correct distance away, it almost looks a little 3D. Yeah, that's a really kind of interesting thing that the subliminal cues that you get from the extra accurate detail, mm -hmm. particularly like um, haze in the distance. When you're watching really good native Ultra HD content, on a really good screen that's that's been set up properly and you're at a good distance you're going to start seeing more depth there than you would with uh, with full HD you're, you'll start seeing some actual uh, 3D effect going on in there and it's just more realistic. So really Samsung here has given us everything we could ever want. It's UHD, it's OLED, you have the ability to wall mount it if you want it flat and then also with the press of a button you can get the curved display. So I, I don't know what else we could ask for. Can you think of anything else? Well I don't think it makes coffee yet. Okay. So. Well, that'd be good. Work on that, Sam. So, Mike, tell us a little bit about what we're standing in front of right now. All right, this is an absolutely massive 21 by 9 cinema format Ultra HD screen. The screen is uh, not actually available for sale, but it gives you kind of a hint of after you hit the lottery what you might be looking for. <laughs> and probably not in 2014, maybe in 2015. It's a future thing. It's coming to you. Be patient. Um, and when we say UHD, this isn't just a 4K UHD. This is actually 5K. Right. It's a 5120 by 2160, so it's got an enormous number of pixels. More pixels than you can consume in your lifetime. Yeah. We're seeing a lot of the uh, 5K and 8K formats around mm -hmm. the show. Last year we saw one, and now we're seeing several. So mm -hmm. we might see a little bit more of this as like the next generation. And even though what we're standing in front of right now isn't coming directly, a lot of UHD is becoming available. Like you were saying, some of the lower priced UHD TVs that you can get now, you could even get for under $1,000. Yeah, that's right. Prices have come down significantly. Mm -hmm. When Ultra HD was first introduced, mm -hmm. the prices were really, really sticker shock inducing. Some of the lesser known brands are really trying to come in with a value pricing mm -hmm. argument and really try to get you to try their brand. When it comes to the 21 to 9 ratio like we're standing in front of right now, if you're to watch something that's in a 16 to 9 format, you'll actually get black bars on the side. Is that correct? Well, there's actually <laughs> a number of different uh, settings that most of these sets can handle. What okay. they'll do is they'll give you black bars on the side mm -hmm. with the original format. 
Uh, they can probably stretch the screen. Most TVs now can handle the different um, form factors of the screen, the different aspect ratios. And how does this aspect ratio relate to, say, going to a movie theater and seeing it on a screen, a regular screen or an IMAX screen? How does this compare to that as far as the user experience? Well, this is, this is very much like what you would see in the theater. A lot of theaters are either uh, 2K or 4K equivalent if they're mm -hmm. not filmed. So what, what's happening is when you get 4K or 5K in this case, with this size screen, this aspect ratio, you're really getting the cinema experience at home. That's awesome. So make your popcorn, grab your soda at home. You can wear your PJs or your underwear for all I care. And uh, watch movies in your home. Thanks uh, to Toshiba. Get that lottery ticket first. Yes, do that for sure. So all the majors have curved UHD OLED TVs. Well, not all of them have UHD OLED, but all of them have curved UHDs that are coming to market in 2014. It's real, it's happening, this is the year for it. We're standing in front of LG's spread right now. Mike, a lot of people use the term 4K and UHD interchangeably, but I know that there are specific nuances that differentiate the two. Right. Could you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. So 4K is actually a production format, and it, it was sort of the legacy term because when the uh, production companies, the, the film studios, were filming in 2K, they upgraded okay. to 4K before the display before industry. Before displays got there. Right, but they were doing it for their own purposes. Then they would release it in 2K format. Okay. But they still were talking about 4K. So when TV makers started making the TVs, the only term at first was 4K, even though that was the production side. Okay. Ultra HD is the official CEA designated uh, term for 4K format on a consumer display. So as you can hear, it's kind of turning into a dance club here at LG. Mike and I are totally partying it up. <laughs> Thank you, of course, to CEA for lending us Mike and all of his knowledge that he's helping us out with. Folks, what's the coolest thing that you've seen at CES in our coverage so far? Let us know in the comments down below. And where do you see UHD TV going? Is it going to your living room or is it not something that you're into? My name is Trisha Hirschberger. Don't forget to like and subscribe. You can always click this annotation if you want to see everything else. And uh, Mike and I have a lot of TVs to look at. Pretty much. Mm -hmm.